for another quick video, I'm doing a versus right here. Based on the capacitors being put in series with the circuit, that's negative of the source to the positive of the capacitors. I'm doing a versus about three 470s and one 1000 microfarad capacitor. Basically, I'm going to see which one explodes because this is a high current source. This is meant to be for high voltage, uh, low current input and to uh, a regulated voltage uh, high current output. The load of the motor puts resistance on the capacitors which that's why the charge builds up in them and then when the charge is enough they are pushing on the load thus regulating themselves, current flows in, current flows out. Right now this is a hell of a lot of current trying to get in but these are holding it back so yeah I'm going to do a little versus see which one explodes because this one can run the motor or these can run the motor so but collectively they're a higher farad and uh, this is 16 volt this is 25 volt obviously these are just smaller capacitors uh, so I'm going to see the outcome of that right now they're holding steady at 4.46 odd volt I see the motor is doing its thing take that off there if I add resistance to it obviously the voltage is going to drop across the capacitors because the current can't flow or the voltage can't flow in a way if you turn the finger off you can see it speeds up it goes past its rating and then settles back down again well I don't say settles down but the motor's actually got more current going across it now because the capacitors and the resistance build up charge. And they're building it up, building it up, thinking, oh, yeah, I want to push this thing faster. So, yeah. By doing, probably stopping this, actually, I'm probably going to risk the capacitors blowing up because the high current from the battery is going to force feed those uh, capacitors. And you see, it's going even faster. The voltage drops back down due to its self-regulating. And this motor, you know, saying, I guess maybe in a way this motor is saying, I don't need that much. So it steps it back down to what the motor will take to move that. So it's quite an adaptive circuit. Very adaptive. Um, I guess in high current loads you'll need a higher UF. But I actually tried that with this one. This is a 16 volt 2700 uh, microfarad capacitor. And it didn't really want to know. I think it, you ran the motor, but ran it very slowly. Again, due to its internal resistance. I did try these ones on this motor. And this 16 volt one, uh, 1000 microfarad cap, got hot because it's holding back the current. But this one was demanding more current as it was. So overall, I think actually 1,000 farads is quite an adaptive amount. If you've got a high current draw, so you want about six or seven of them in parallel, or more than that probably. Uh, but obviously, you've got a low current draw, but it doesn't matter because collectively, this is over 2,000 farads. But this motor will run just the same from the 1000 on this side or the collective uh, 3 times 470. It'll run exactly the same. It's just I want to see which one will fail under a high current, let's say a power surge of some sort. And yeah, the battery's being charged. So it's probably <laughs> doing some damage to that actually. I don't know. It seems to be running pretty well. And again, um, just to highlight this. No, well look, the capacitor's just dropped off. No change. But it will run with either one. So one is making the other one redundant in a way. And that's the negative what we're doing. 
Oh, okay, I've got a negative, but it said backwards. No, don't care. Let's just charge that. So these will allow for more high current load. But the motor doesn't need that much uh, current. Oh, there we are. Just happened. Okay, these ones have failed, but well, this one has. Still running, okay. The voltage is climbing because these two are taking up that amount. So I'm going to put that one back in place. So yeah, I think that, that's pretty much settled it. Although it might not have blown if this one was in circuit at the time. Stop it. Uh, so, I think with that, no, well, with that, it leaves an unanswered question because there's three of them here. Why didn't they simultaneously fail? Why did only one fail and not the rest? So this capacitor could have been faulty in the first place, leading to failure. Failure. Uh, quicker. But I mean, even from this high current battery, that was a little, tss, little, tss, nothing. So it wasn't an explosion. There's a goop from the inside, that brown, horrible stuff. Um, so, there's, there's the one in unusual trait. It builds up the charge. But that's the thing though, guys. The motor's not connected. So how could it be building up the charge if the motor's not connected? What happens is the, when you disconnect it, the collapsing field goes back uh, and charges the capacitors up to the original voltage rate. Um, at least that's how I can explain it. But I've only shown the 10 volt across these capacitors has a 2 volt drop as it was a, a conversion, I think. He thinks, but not sure. So I'll pull that off there and I'll read. Give me the goddamn clip. I'll read what's actually across the capacitors. Capacitors. So that was running from the. Hmm, Negative of the capacitor to the positive of the battery gives me a reading. This is now just running across the capacitors. Oh, there's my missing two volts. Strange, huh? Yeah, try it again. Do, 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 do. So. <laughs> Uh, the full charge exists in the circuit, but this just siphons off what it needs. Uh, so yeah, from conclusion, roughly from that explosion, may have been brought on due to this one falling out at the time in the video, but it seems a higher farad. Uh, well, yeah, a higher farad would do better because these lower farads would all have to push as it was, but one of them will get tired, I think. Or maybe they're even pushing against each other because they're in parallel. So again, the weaker one would be broken first. So it's best off really getting one capacitor. Either a thousand farads, which seems to be a pretty good adaptive amount. You can run this motor and this motor, but it does get hot. So a thousand thousand farads in about ten, one thousand farads in parallel would collectively go for a high current load. So yeah, okay. <laughs> that was it. And again the voltage regulator. Uh this is the output wire. Negative of the bat this goes to the negative of the battery. So negative to negative charges the capacitor. The resistor Oh god, from one again, my brain's gone. Basically, that resistor discharges the capacitor at a rate that you can set through the pot or that naturally occurs because the resistor. I explained this better in another video. The one I'm in the middle of converting right now. Uh, that's going to be the voltage divider. Thanks, Tim, man, for the title, but that's what it does, so that's what I'm going to call it the voltage divider. And the current collector, so technically it's actually still a capacitor transformer from a CST.
it's uh, kind of both, really. Capacitive Step Down Transformer, that's the title. Maybe with this in combination of parallel capacitors, it works as an adaptive capacitive step down transformer. But then again, you could do that with a voltage regulator. So in itself, it would become very adaptive and will become a one size fits all circuit if connected or built, which I might build it. Probably should do. And I never got around to testing this one. So yeah. Okay, that's my conclusion. All right. Have a nice day then.